Hello there. Welcome to part two of the Unity Grid Movement System series. Today we will be making the camera follow the cube or player. Make sure to stick around to the end as we will be going over a few iterations of the concept before landing on one which suits. Alternatively, if you just want the solution without watching, check out the GitHub link in the description. Here is what we had at the end of last episode. As you can see, it's only suitable for static scenes. If the cube moves too far, it can no longer be seen. The most simple implementation I can think of is to just attach the main camera to the player game object. Okay, here we are back in the Unity project. Let's just grab the main camera, stick it underneath the player, like so, make sure it's indented, and then hit play. This is what we end up with, which it works, and it might be okay for some games or some use cases, uh, but I'd just like to add something more. It feels a bit too janky to me. So let's see how we can do that. So first of all, we want to move the main camera back off the player up here. Now we want to add a new script. So we'll go here, create script, C-sharp script, and call it camera movement. Also, don't forget to drag the script onto your camera. There we go. And then open that up in your editor. And let's dive into the code and see if we can make something a bit nicer. Here is the most simple version I could think of to make the camera follow the player. First, we need to store the position of the camera relative to the player. We do this in the start function and just leave it saved. Then every frame, we update the position of the camera to be the position of the player plus this offset vector. Okay, now what we want to do is click on our main camera. See this target field we added? We need to drag the player game object into the target. Let's hit play and see how it looks. Okay, as you can see, it's pretty much functionally identical to what we had just before, but it actually looks worse. This is not really going to do it for me, so let's have a look at how we can add something to make it a bit nicer. So what I would like is for the camera to lag a little behind and smoothly traverse the distance to the new position. Let's see how we can do that. Okay, now what we want to do is grab the target position for the camera. This is not the same as the target dot position, which is where the player is at the moment. This is the position that we want the camera to move to in order to have a clean transition. So we'll calculate that by adding the position of the player and the offset together. Now we want to calculate the heading, which is the camera target position minus the transform position, which is the position of the camera. Then we just want to grab the distance from the current camera position to the target camera position. And finally, we want to get the direction that our camera is going to be moving in. If the distance is greater than 0 0.1, we want to move the camera. If we multiply the direction by delta time, we should see movement at a rate of one unit per second. Okay, here we are moving around. As you can see, it takes about one second, or it should take pretty much exactly one second to move into the new position. Next, we'll add another variable to store the speed. This is how many units per second we should move. Okay, if we come down here to the bottom right, we have a speed parameter. Now if we turn this up, it should make the camera faster. If we turn it down, it should make the camera slower. Obviously that's really slow, we don't really want that. Now depending on your own preferences, you may want to make this faster or slower. This is pretty good. 
Um, but I don't really like the fact that it moves every single time you move. I would like it to have sort of a radius around the player so that you could move around in this space without the camera moving. Let's see how to do that. The first thing we want to do is replace that 0.1f for the serialized field of type float. We will call this inner buffer. Now we want to add another serialized field of type float and call this outer buffer. Next, we're just going to add a bool variable called moving. Now down in our update function, we want to check if the camera is outside that outer buffer radius. And if it is, we start moving. If the camera starts moving, it'll move back towards the camera target position. If the camera finds itself within the inner buffer radius, it'll snap to the precise position defined in the camera target position variable. We then set moving to false as the camera has reached the right spot. Okay, here we are in the editor. And as you can see, we've got this little dead zone. So if I move around, the camera doesn't move until the little white sphere is outside the larger red sphere on the right hand side, if you can see that. And then once the little white sphere gets into the smaller red sphere, it snaps into the center. It's a little bit jarring. I might actually make that inner sphere slightly smaller or do something a bit different, but it's looking pretty good for now. There is, however, one more problem that I'd like to fix, and that's the fact that we can actually move off the screen. If you move fast enough, the camera can't keep up. In order to make the camera move faster, the further away we are, we just come down to this line and multiply the speed by mathf.max distance and 1. The reason that we use a 1 here is because if the distance is less than 1, it'll actually decrease the speed until it gets really close and it'll be really slow inside the circle. Okay, here we are again. As you can see, I can't move off the screen anymore because the further away that the player gets from the camera, the faster it moves towards the target destination. That's all we're gonna be covering for today. Uh, next episode, we're going to do camera rotation. Thanks for watching. Catch ya.